primarily because so these are the two provinces where we have quite big you know barrages as well as the remodeling of the irrigation network so so which is you know uh, uh, spread it all across the f uh, the four provinces so in this regard uh, punjab as i explained has you know already carried out uh, the uh, rehabilitation of its uh, several barrages uh, and in the same spirit, the government of Sindh is also undertaking presently the remodeling uh, of its Gudu Barrage as well as the Sakhar Barrage. Next, please. It is ongoing activity presently. The strategic priority too covers uh, the you know construction or development of the water storages in the country. Next, please. So construction of the Amir Bhasha, Mohpand, uh, Nolong, Naigaj, Garuk in Balochistan, Basol, Vindar, Panjgur, Avaran, and Gishkor. So all these put together at least uh, by the year 2030. So it is uh, uh, a high hope that uh, we can you know, achieve the target of adding a 10 million acre freight uh, in the country. Uh, as, so as far as uh, uh, the responsible agencies are concerned, so concerning the Amir Bhasha, Mohpand, Nolong, and Naigaj, Nolong is a dam in Jhalmaksi area of Balochistan and Naigaj is a dam in Dadu area of Sin. So these are, uh, so both uh, we can categorize them as uh, medium dams. Uh, uh, so these will be responsibility of Wabda. Uh, and of course the other dams in which the provincial irrigation departments are already doing, uh, I mean, good work. And uh, this implementation framework also encourages them. Uh, to, you know, go for achieving the target of adding 10 MAF in the system. Next, please. <coughs> uh, the strategic uh, priority three uh, pertains to, uh, I mean, use of technology in order to, you know, achieve the overall objectives of the integrated water resources management as well as the national water policy. So the policy particularly stipulates concerning seawater utilization, the recycling of the gray water, the use of GIS uh, remote sensing water resources inventory, monitored irrigation deliveries, and small and medium private investments. Next, please. So in this regard, uh, uh, we have proposed uh, to the stakeholders to, you know, take up the task of digital mapping of existing surface and groundwater infrastructure in irrigation, drainage, floods, and drinking water subsectors using the G So the indicative timeline for this action is uh, uh, one year, and the responsibility will rest with the Wabda Federal Flood Commission, Provincial Irrigation Departments, and WASAs. Basically, I would like to share with the participants of this, uh, you know, uh, gathering that uh, in Pakistan, uh, so in terms of mapping of uh, particularly the groundwater, uh, the good work which was so which which is I mean still being referred was uh, I mean done way back in. You, so we can say early 80s and after that uh, so we have uh, I mean some good work available but that is not you know so that uh, basically does not have the full coverage of the aquifers under lane in the Indus uh, system of river so that needs to be done uh, and that needs to be you know continued uh, so because uh, the groundwater mapping is something which needs to be dynamic rather than doing one time and then you know stopping over there so in order to make the informed decisions, so it is required that we need to map uh, particularly the groundwater because so that is the area on which the regulation of the government is very little. Next, please. Uh, then it comes uh, uh, for the provinces to develop web-based water resources management information system. Uh, so as far as my personal uh, knowledge is concerned, the Punjab Irrigation Department has already put in place its WRMIS. Uh, and uh, so that is also to be, you know, followed and replicated uh, by all other uh, three provinces. So this is the key in order to make the informed decisions. Uh, and for this activity, uh, we are proposing an indicative timeline of one and a half year, and the primary responsibility will rest with the provincial irrigation departments. And of course, a uh, very famous or infamous uh, telemetry system that, I mean, everyone, you know, agree uh, agrees uh, I mean, in principle to have uh, this system in place uh, because that is perhaps the only way to, you know, build the trust and, you know, diffuse the discord amongst the stakeholders who are using or who are sharing the water as a resource. Uh, so in this regard, uh, quite some work has already been done in terms of formulation of the project. 
uh, and we are so we were sharing this uh, progress the other day with the uh, president of Pakistan in a meeting. So we have fixed uh, 30 months indicative timeline based upon uh, all the details so which have been worked out uh, jointly by Wabda and IRSA. So the main responsibility will rest again with IRSA and Wabda. Yes, next please. The strategic uh, priority four pertains to the renewable energy use in terms of hydropower use of dams, the solarization of tube wells. Of course, you will see that. Uh, so we are cognizant uh, to you know curb uh, the over abstraction of the uh, groundwater, you know, in the garb of uh, perhaps uh, the solarization of tube wells and solar-based seawater desalination. Next, please. So while, uh, you know, formulating the tasks under this uh, strategic priority, uh, we were, so we exercised a care. Uh, yes, this is just a simple, you know, action increase hydropower capacity to make it at least 40% of the overall, uh, so, you know, hydrothermal mix in the country by the year 2030, and then further increasing it to 50% by the year 2050. And I can share with the participants that uh, so we have set these goals uh, duly taking into consideration of the targets which have been set in the integrate uh, in the indicative uh, generation capacity expansion plan, the known uh, the document known as IGCEP. So that provides the targets up to year 2040, uh, and that you know considers uh, the development of new uh, power projects. May those be uh, I mean thermal or the hydro. Uh, by using the least cost model uh, and on the basis of that IDCEP, so we have basically picked the hydro part and we have, you know, put it in the implementation framework. So the responsibility will rest with Wabda uh, and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa uh, Provincial Department dealing with the hydro development called as PIDO as well as the PPIB being the, you know, one window uh, facility to, you know, encourage the private investors for development of hydro power as well as the PPDB of uh, Punjab, the Punjab Power Development Board. So Ministry of Water Resources and Power Division of the federal government will be in coordination role. Next, please. Uh, well, so, uh, so as I uh, briefly explained, uh, well, so again, it is concerning hydropower use of dams. So ensure installation of hydropower on small and medium dams where hydropower potential is at least more than five megawatt. So again, uh, a, a a care has been exercised keeping in view the you know financial viability uh, so because we can always go for you know uh, development of hydropower even on the small and mini dams but then perhaps uh, so that you know does not appear financially viable so in this implementation framework we have uh, fixed uh, the lower limit that at least with so there is a potential of generation of hydropower up to 5 megawatt so those will be taken up as part of this implementation framework. Next, please. Next. Next. There's a glitch. Well, uh, so don't we have more slides? There are. Can you please come out of the full screen mode and just, you know, display the PowerPoint as such? So ladies and gentlemen, uh, so this is the unfortunate part of the technology, you know, so perhaps there is a glitch, so at least, uh, so we had a good part, so which was coming under the IWRM, so I can share uh, the, you know, uh, brief uh, contours of those uh, verbally with you out of my memory. Uh, so basically, uh, the takeaway from this presentation or discussion is that uh, uh, the important thing, I mean, having policy, I just want to share that, uh, so way back in 2012, 
Pakistan have had conducted a study by, you know, gathering a group of international experts in the water sector. And the government of Pakistan came up with a report called as the Water Sector Task Force Report. So that report provides five key areas on which the immediate action is required to be taken. And very interestingly, uh, you know, uh, the experts uh, of the stature of, you know, John Briscoe, so we have had, anyway, I complete my thing. Uh, the John Briscoe and there were quite a bunch of other experts from Australia who have had a real practical, you know, uh, knowledge of the water resource management, particularly in the large uh, basins, river basins. So they have very interestingly mentioned that, I mean, having policy is perhaps not a solution. Uh, and they quoted that, uh, 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 I mean, their experience uh, in various countries uh, in the world, uh, so where they found uh, qu quite a bit of uh, good work done in the form of policies. But then when it comes to implementation, so everything was, you know, bogged down. And while saying so, uh, they mentioned that uh, when it came to Australia in terms of management of water in the Murray-Darling Basin, so uh, the government of Australia thought it appropriate rather than going for the uh, water policy, perhaps it would be, you know, very practical to have a national water initiative. So they, you know, developed a water initiative uh, and interestingly there is also the water is a devolved subject uh, and federal government has no powers to legislate on water, but still uh, they, you know, gathered the provinces, convinced them to, you know, uh, delegate their power of uh, legislation to the federal government, particularly on the six areas for a limited period of time, and that was, I think, seven years. So, Doctor, please correct me if I'm wrong. And by doing this in a very practical manner, they achieved not only those, uh, the basic uh, targets among those six or seven uh, areas within the stipulated time of seven years uh, by way of uh, doing a good legislation at the federal level. And then they, you know, uh, so basically handed over uh, the whole thing uh, back again to the provinces. And by so doing, uh, the Australian government, so government has been able to, you know, manage uh, the water resources in its Murray-Darling Basin, which is, so you can just compare it with, with, with our Indus uh, Basin uh, uh, that, so both the basins, both the Murray-Darling and the Indus Basin are same in size, but when it comes to water, so the Murray-Darling Basin water is almost one-sixth in quantum as compared to Indus Basin. And I, so I also visited once uh, in the basin in Australia, and I was told that uh, particularly in the drought, which was quite a long period of drought, the yields, the average yields of the crops which are cultivated in Murray Darling Basin were, you know, so more uh, than we have had in Pakistan in, you know, good years of water availability. So that gives us a lot of message that this is something which we are talking is quite, you know, uh, tangibly achievable and that is being achieved in some parts of the world with a greater challenge as compared to the challenge in terms of water availability in Pakistan. So that is again a motivation and an encouragement for all of us who are dealing with the water sector in various capacities at the federal and the provincial level as well as, uh, I mean, at the departments uh, and the civil society that, so this is something that can be achieved. Now we have got the, strate uh, the strategic priority five. I think they have been able to uh, recollect it from this technology. So uh, the IWRM is perhaps the longer part in which, uh, uh, so can you go back one slide? I just want to tell that uh, when, we, when we say about solarization of tubewell, no, okay, it's okay. So we have fixed that the solarization of tubewell will be the decision which will be made, particularly uh, giving, uh, you know, due consideration to the fact that, uh, uh, I mean, by all means, the abstraction of the water shall be balanced uh, with the recharge, and this, uh, I mean, decision can be implemented uh, while, uh, so we will have the whole aquifer mapped, so which is again a task under the, under the uh, strategic priority one. So in the IWRM, I'll go very quickly. So we need to carry out some dam, uh, the uh, dam break studies in order to prepare the emergency preparedness action plans. So that is, again, very important, something uh, at a policy level, so which needs to be, you know, implemented, and dams with the height of more than 15 meters. Next, please. 
it is concerning the flood management and then comes environmental integrity in which watershed management and sea water intrusion needs to be checked through structural and non-structural measures next please uh, preservation of wetlands and indus delta you know we need to uh, so so it is a compulsion to have everything included at least in the implementation framework so that it shouldn't just to ensure uh, the completeness of the whole thing so of course wetlands are very important and indicative timeline for this activity has been fixed as two years particularly uh, the responsibility will rest with the pid sin and wabda then comes the uh, you know a restoration of aquatic ecology in the satluj ravi chanab jhelum and indus by releasing adequate e flows so again we need to you know study by uh, you know developing some baseline uh, we are um, i mean facing a very specific critical situation particularly uh, in the eastern rivers and also in the western rivers uh, you know uh, so where uh, the aquatic e ecology is perhaps not that pristine as it used to be before the development of whole system so we need to fix a trade off you know the benefit is ours and the aquatic damage uh, or the environmental damage is also ours so we need to fix a fine line that where we can draw that line to ensure that we should not be seen as a party so which is damaging the environment next please uh, to reduce the non revenue water in at least five water utilities at five metropolitan cities to start with karachi lahore peshawar quetta and islamabad so it is something again which needs to be studied under this implementation framework for which the time has been fixed for 2 years next please safe quota ground water by you know introducing some innovative interventions like for instance it's a food for thought like buying back of the water abstraction rights and offering alternate livelihoods again it is a concept which was you know implemented in australia when they you know overcommitted uh, the water you know use Uh, among the stakeholders and then they perhaps spent uh, almost 6 billion dollars of uh, you know fortune to buy back uh, the water rights from the users next please uh to carry out pilot in the steel pollution control project and and then to carry out some equitable delivery of irrigation water to all water users in this uh i mean uh, implementation framework action Uh, i also remember from my uh, personal knowledge that the government of sindh is also carrying out uh, with the funding of world bank uh, a project called the water sector improvement program uh, and punjab irrigation is also doing something next please uh, develop a ground water simulation model for whole indus basin and areas outside indus basin as i as i mentioned earlier we need to have this simulation model to you know project that what would happen under different scenarios with the ground water aquifer both in terms of quality and quantity so that needs to be developed and we have uh, be, uh, so proposed to uh, give this responsibility to wabda keeping in view its uh, previous uh, uh, you know uh, the expertise and experience capacity building for management and research next please to develop the revenue sharing framework with the locals to enhance the acceptability of new projects so that is again very important when it comes to development of you know large dam so we quite frequently uh, i mean experience quite a lot of resistance amongst the locals next please and then irsa reform so we are, we are already working on it uh, the strengthening program for commissioner indus water so that is already an ongoing activity which is you know just now started with effect from 1st of july this uh, year and it's it's a five year program so we are all already working on it next please regulatory control again very important the last uh, priority area in the policy next please to formulate provincial water resource regulatory authority and to define the groundwater entitlements and regulate the groundwater abstractions so uh, these are just the indications that uh, i mean what is required to be done to give effect to the actions defined in the policy and again we uh, we are uh, you know uh, looking forward to the provinces that uh, how they take it and so whatever good work they have already done so we need to you know uh, uh, strengthen it uh, so that will basically supplement it and we will be able to finalize this framework next please to legislate and regulate through law the land use on flood plains uh, based on flood flows medium and high flood risks 
Next, please. So in last, I just want to share with you that uh, although we have uh, had a, uh, the implementation framework and the policy uh, at a tier two level that is called the steering committee, but when you see the composition of the steering committee, so it seems that there needs to be uh, the representation of some more departments. So in order to you know, ensure that uh, the hierarchy is so that uh, the decisions taken at the implementation forum should flow down. So we propose that uh, the federal government should enter into a formal you know, uh, agreement in the form of MOU uh, to collaborate with the Ministry of Water Resources uh, for the provinces with the provincial governments to ensure effective implementation. Next, please. The rationale, as I just mentioned, that uh, presently we feel that there is a fragmented planning in water sector at federal and provincial levels. Of course, this is a devolved subject, but then we have so we have also uh, a Ministry of Water Resources at the federal level. So, in order to you know supplement each other, we feel that despite spending huge resources, the desired goals are not cl clearly seen to be achieved. I mean, everyone says that. Uh, so, we have approved a policy. And what is the implementation? As if that before this policy in Pakistan, so there had been basically nothing doing as far as the water is concerned. That is quite a wrong impression and that needs to be dispelled. And now is the time while we have this policy that we need to you know, develop a synergy uh, and to synchronize the efforts which should be presented and seen that everything which is being done in the water sector is duly aligned with the policy actions which have been set out in the national water policy. Uh, and the other rationale which we feel at the federal level is that there is a need to identify clear goals in a systematic manner to achieve larger objectives of national water policy, that is IWRM. And ladies and gentlemen, here I just want to share with you that when Pakistan was in its, uh, I would say, uh, nascent uh, phase of development, so particularly water was one of the major areas in which the country had to develop uh, its infrastructure and everything, and the systems in place. So at that time, under the auspices of the World Bank, very famous Lefnik report was, you know, published, uh, uh, so prepared. And Peter Lefnik was the gentleman, so who happened to be the finance minister of the Netherlands, and subsequently, so he was appointed as uh, the executive directors of the Netherlands in the World Bank uh, uh, European constituency. So he was basically assigned the task by the then president of the World Bank in 1962-63 to come up with something tangible that should be based on the scientific principles that how to go about with the development of water sector in Pakistan. And Peter Lefnick gathered, uh, I mean, again, the good experts in the field of irrigation, agriculture, hydropower, and, and the sociology, uh, so from both America and the Europe. And they did a good work. And the, and the best part of that study was that they did, you know, the optimization. And you can imagine it that if, uh, I mean, in front of all of us, so there are, you know, uh, the PC ones or the projects of a, a dozen of projects are, you know, presented. So it will be very difficult to pick any one that what should be the first one which needs to be implemented, followed by the next, by the second and third and so on. So this can be, you know, uh, 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 decided uh, while we have done the optimization of the, of the uh, development regime. And uh, the need to identify clear goals in a systematic manner is basically aiming towards that. A functional level forum needs to be formally constituted for collaboration between federal and provincial levels. Next, please. The scope of this uh, framework will be collective decision making for improvement of water sector to ensure IWRM uh, for initiation of projects uh, like presently, so where the federal government has to finance the water sector projects. So one fine morning, we just received PC1s of different projects from many provinces, all the provinces, without having any clear yardstick that which one is to be forwarded and which one is to be deferred. While saying, uh, while, you know, uh, I'm mean, appreciating its importance, but perhaps that may not be uh, that important uh, in the present time. Per, uh, Rather, that needs to be implemented five years down the line. So this is something which needs to be, you know, introduced in the decision making. Of, so when it comes to the investment decisions, then the international collaboration is, of course, that the federal government. I mean, whatever commitments being uh, the federal government should make, 
those must be duly aligned and vetted by the provincial governments because they are the custodians of waters at the provincial levels. Then countrywide monitoring through data collection and analysis, so that is again which needs to be done in a unitary manner and coherent implementation of national water policy. Next please. So the target of steering committee has been requested, uh, the steering committee has been requested to approve Ministry of Water Resources to sign MOUs with the provincial governments and the establishment of provin uh, provincial liaison units, uh, so headed by the respective, uh, the additional chief secretaries or chairman P and D boards uh, comprising the concerned secretaries. So ladies and gentlemen, with this I stop uh, and I thank you all for your patience. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Richardson, for really elaborating about the uh, the national water policy and then the implementation plan and everything. Uh, I mean, thanks for all the details. Let me share, I mean, that my experience in Australia or in China, where in those countries have access. Federal government role is basically providing, making sure that all the knowledge is available or about the holistic system level, thinking how much is the water sources available and everything. And wherever the successes have been made, then success has gone to the provincial departments where they are coordinating and working with the federal government. But we need to go one step further. We need to go to the local scale level where the local governments are also involved there. They are making the same involving the community and everything. So I think uh, even in Australia where I was a part of that journey, the federal government role was coming under the providing that the funds as like a carrot and stick, working with the provincial government and making sure that all the policies are aligned. And uh, the similar experience in China, that they need to work back from the top-down approach and as well as the bottom-up approach. So both of these need to meet somewhere, and we need to think of water as a resource. So now, considering the time here, I will be just now moving to the provincial stakeholders, maybe starting with at the Sin province. Uh, sir, could you please elaborate, ab especially about the after the national water policy events that has been approved? What are the progress has been made? So where are you standing in terms of the Provincial Water Act or the Provincial Plan? How to improve that on water as a resource? Thank you very much. And sir, one thing is also considering the time, I will be saying if you in three minutes, if you could just, uh, then we'll come back again for the series of questions. Thank sure. you. Sure, I will try to complete it, my point of view, within the stipulated time. Uh, taking the guidance and uh, from the national water policy, the objectives and uh, priorities set by the national water policy, the province of Sindh has started its working. Uh, initially, it was asked us to prepare a framework of actions to implement the uh, objectives of national water policy. But uh, Sindh has taken a, f a step further and now uh, Sindh is in the process of formulating its own Sindh water policy. So uh, on the front of Sindh water policy, uh, we have conducted nine different baseline studies uh, covering different aspects from climate, water use, gender, uh, groundwater, economics of water. Uh, so, so based upon the findings of those uh, studies, uh, the drafting group of the water policy, which comprises of international and national experts, uh, have prepared their first draft. Uh, and uh, a provincial level steering committee, uh, headed by the Minister of Irrigation, uh, is looking after the entire process. Whereas uh, interdepartmental uh, coordination committee is also there to give their feedback from various stakeholders uh, for the formalization, uh, finalization of the water policy and water policy. Our water policy basically uh, focuses on six major areas. Number one is managing water resources. And that uh, management comprises of uh, institutional right sizing. Uh, the same government is considering the importance of a wider role of uh, irrigation department and converting it into a water resource uh, management department instead of providing water for agriculture and irrigation purposes only. The uh, new department will be looking after the water from the perspective of 
uh, irrigation, industry, domestic use, nature, and various other uh, water users. Similarly, uh, 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 steps are being taken to reform the legal aspects, you know, in Sindh, the basic uh, uh, law is Sindh Irrigation Act 1879, uh, but uh, under new water policy, the laws are also being reviewed and uh, uh, recently working on the Sindh Water Management Ordinance and Sindh Irrigation Act uh, is going to be started to review them as per the requirements of the uh, new challenges and new assignments and new roles and responsibilities. Uh, similarly, uh, importance is being given to water sector uh, planning as a whole. Uh, we, we, will, uh, we are going to prepare a water budget and its consumption patterns and future requirements of water in Sindh province uh, uh, with an equal emphasis on water information systems also. Uh, under uh, new World Bank funded project SWAT, we are going to establish a hydro uh, uh, agro hydro informatic systems which will be uh, compiling the information from the irrigation department as well as from the agriculture department and based upon the analysis of the data and information uh, clear guidelines will be issued to the irrigation and agriculture department for the uh, water use and agricultural uh, practices. Similarly, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the irrigation department is being converted into a multifunctional uh, department covering water sources in the province. Uh, and we are also focusing in our water policy how the water productivity could be improved, how the uh, efficient and uh, better use of water could be ensured uh, in our uh, policies, in our practices. Uh, canal allocations uh, will also be uh, reviewed under the new water policies. Another important aspect in Sindh water policy is on Sindh uh, urban and rural uh, water and sanitation requirements. So as we know in Sindh the urbanization uh, is on the increasing side and uh, population there is a pro pressure of population growth not only in our province, but in our country also. So the aspect of uh, domestic water requirements as well as sanitation uh, needs of the population is also under consideration or giving importance at the policy level. Uh, Sindh water policy is also going to address the issue of water availability to the off-grid people because uh, in uh, uh, arid areas of Sindh, uh, there is no any canal network uh, available for uh, agriculture or drinking water needs. So uh, that area is also being considered with importance. And uh, along with uh, dry land areas, we are also going uh, to give importance to the uh, wet, watershed management aspects also, and similarly rangeland management. Institutional uh, uh, restructuring is also in the process. We are also focusing simultaneously on the uh, uh, newly created institutions of area water boards, FOs and wa uh, water course associations. Uh, and under the new projects, we are also going to establish two more area water boards in Sindh. So it shows uh, the c continuity of irrigation reforms introduced in water sectors uh, in Sindh in 1999. Uh, similarly, uh, groundwater management is also giving uh, equal importance because of the water growing water scarcity in the province and uh, seawater intrusion and gender uh, aspect to the water is all, are the main pillars of Sindh water policy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Uchin Saab, for really elaborating about the Sindh policy and then what are the key features of that one. Let's hear from the neighbor, your neighbor here and also the provincial neighbor, Balochistan. So what's happening in Balochistan, considering that when the Balochistan was the first province where the, some policy or act was approved in 2006, 
but that has not been implemented and we are hearing it now again that there is a policy formulation the revival of that one the, the act or something could you please provide a bit more insight nadeem sir thank you okay. uh, bismillahir rahmanir rahim first of all i would like to thank you good self uh, dr mohsin saab for conducting this amazing and outstanding workshop uh secondly as far as the policy is concerned i will not take too much time uh, already my colleague from sindh uh has asked by dr saab that you have to take 3 minutes but he took more than 3 minutes like they take more water from balochistan so he also took more time so uh, actually the policy has been uh, made and it has been submitted as balochistan water policy in the provincial cabinet and uh, in coming months uh, it's expected that it will be approved it's more or less the same national water policy uh, in line with the national water policy and dr mehr saab already explained many many things uh, i have few questions from dr saab if he allows other than the uh, balochistan chapter the policy is in process it will shortly be approved dr saab said few things uh, i have been noting Uh, as a strategic priority one he focused on national water policy regarding remodeling of irrigation networks uh, i am seeing i am feeling quite happy about few dams storage reservoirs in south balochistan uh, uh, in the current year but uh, the chapter as far as remodeling of irrigation network is uh, required Uh, we have been quite unlucky in that case uh, we would like to draw your kind attention towards that chapter we are having kirtar canal system and petfeeder canal system unfortunately um, uh, they are in very poor condition they need immediate attention a lot of resources uh, rehabilitation remodeling for our poor, poor people Uh, secondly the digital mapping as far as the digital mapping is concerned whether balochistan has been considered in digital mapping the third question is about uh, the balanced use of solar tube wells mayor saab said that uh, in the slides i focused it was uh, it will take around 30 months digital mapping and meanwhile uh, they said that uh, they are working to balance solar tube wells rather the damage which will occur during these 30 months what will we do for that we are already uh, uh, gone to the alarming situation uh, nazim sir i will say we'll come back on a discussion later on right, but sir. if you could just elaborate about what pluchistan is doing it then then there will be opportunity for some complete the first round and as i said sir question. as i said that the policy is an uh, approval process and more or less the things are the same regulating the uh, water system and uh, focusing on the water resources improvement of the water resources focusing in the policy on urban water management and one major focus is being made on the behavior change the people how they are using carelessly the uh, the water preferably in the field the poor farmers the seepage losses the conveyance losses so the behavior is being focused they will be taught about that and the reuse of water waste water has also been focused in that policy uh, also the water sector information system will also be worked out and uh, the flood management is also a prominent chapter of that secondly the water pricing the institutional reforms and more preferably the ground water management is also a chapter of that uh, these are the major components which have been addressed in that thank you thank you very thank much thank you ji now i will come to captain saf sir i mean just coming on that one the punjab but so in punjab is the province where they have you have punjab water act is there and you guys are already working with adb on the transformation of the irrigation to the water sources department and then also on the irrigation and drainage act has been approved so want to hear uh, from you captain saf sir thank you very much mohsin saab okay um Uh, we are all aware that the punjab has already approved its provincial um, water policy it was in fact approved by our cabinet on 29th december 2018 so it's been around 3 years uh, since it has been in place um, it uh, is aligned with the national water policy and uh, it has 10 main uh, 
chapters which deal with uh, the issues like enhancing water availability which is very important to everyone. It also addresses the issues of water quality and environment. It also addresses non-irrigation uses of water for example for drinking and sanitation. It also addresses floods and more importantly about uh, on, on droughts as well. Um, we know that uh, water logging and salinity is a recurrent phenomena. It has a chapter on water logging and salinity. It also deals with demand management uh, and touches on issues like population control and water conservation and irrigation efficiencies. It also talks about financial sustainability, which is a very critical area uh, if you want to preserve our irrigation infrastructure investments are important so it has a chapter on financial sustainability it also talks about the water governance and issues relating to transboundary water disputes um, and how we can mitigate through these troublesome waters uh, it also creates institutions to take care that the water policy is itself implemented so uh, having set this background, the, there is a lot of work which has done, gone after the introduction of the policy. We had uh, the, uh, our Provincial Water Act. The Water Act creates institutions and lays down a framework for a sustainable management of water resources and how water which is committed to one particular uh, use can be diverted to another use. It has a, uh, you know, a, a process laid down by which we can divert water from one use to a more competent, com competitive use. Um, this act also creates institutions. So it has the institutions which uh, were required to come in place after the introduction act, they have also come into place. We have a water commission now, which is headed by the chief minister himself. Um, uh, we also have a water regulatory authority, which is going to deal with issues like um, quality of water, who is going to have a license for abstraction and who is going to have a license for disposal of water. And uh, it is not only about uh, giving out a license, it is also about monitoring that the conditions on, under which a license has been given, they are being uh, you know, followed by the undertakers. Um, besides that, we also have uh, created a new uh, zone in our uh, irrigation department that's internal to the irrigation department which is the water resource management zone. So, you know, the history is show very shortly that uh, our engineers are basically focused on delivering water through canals and uh, draining off excess water through drains and managing flood. So nobody is really, you know, concerned with issues uh, which are gaining now critical importance. For example, groundwater management, how to recharge aquifer, and uh, what could be done on improving quality of the, uh, of, the, of the water resources, be it the surface water or the groundwater. So the water zone in the irrigation department would take care of these issues. So this is a dedicated unit which is going to focus entirely on, uh, on, on the upcoming uh, features of our water policy. Um, we uh, have uh, also appointed undertakers, uh, which are essentially the local governments and the, uh, and, and the WASAs and uh, LDAs in the larger cities. Uh, we uh, know that uh, we need to transform ourselves uh, from narrow uh, perspective of an irrigation management department to a water resources management department. We had a uh, technical assistance from Asian Development Bank to steer us through this transition. Uh, the recommendations of uh, their technical assistance are now with us. And um, the most of those recommendations uh, deal with issues which are covered under the water policy. We uh, now have a good handle on how to further, you know, work uh, out the requirements of uh, the policy and to implement those, um, you know, aspects which are given in the policy on ground. We hope that uh, these interventions would uh, would, would uh, generate a, a very you know good uh, water governance system in Punjab that could be followed by other provinces and it could come as a good example uh, for the international community as well. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Saif Saf, for sharing about the different initiative which is happening in Punjab and your vision is how the water governance could be improved. I highly appreciate. Now we'll move to Nizamuddin Saf, the Secretary KP Government. Nizamuddin Saf, could you please uh, provide a bit more information what's happening in KP? The uh, Water Act has been approved and where we are standing now. Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Sir, I think uh, by now it is uh, very much clear. The policy has been framed, the strategic work out, and the implementation framework has also been approved at a federal level at the federal government. Sir, uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, KP, sir, legislation is made. The water, uh, I think uh, its proper name is uh, KP Water Resource Commission has been notified. Sir, this is a massive uh, sort of uh, composition from all ministry, uh, with uh, ministers as a member and all stakeholders, right from industries, irrigation, uh, KP, uh, local government, and so many. Uh, the, uh, sir, at the same time, the, 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 in the next, sir, we have the KP Water uh, Resource Authority that has been established. But unfortunately, the rules have not been framed. We have engaged a consultant for framing the rules. Sir, we are very much, I think, uh, I would say, in line. We have been implementing uh, schemes at the cost of rupees uh, almost 150 billion. Just by in, uh, take, sir, for example, sir, take one example. That, sir, we are, we are at the moment, 13 smart dams have been constructed just to help uh, to, to, uh, to increase the storage capacity. As a 14 new dams, uh, dams are also under construction. They are going to be completed in the next two or three years. So at the same time, feasibility reports are, starts are ongoing. By the end of this, I think we are going to implement so many. So at the same time, uh, it, uh, one, uh, 50 billion schemes are being implemented under the PSDP projects. So the, uh, there was a close, uh, I think, a review in the last week with the Ministry of uh, Secretary of Ministry of Water Resources. So at the same time, we just in this connection, the remodeling of Versa Canal, that is undergoing, sir. Additional land and are being under, brought under cultivation. Yes, sir, at the same time, we have installed sir, for the first time telemetry in the system. I think that is the first in, in uh, Pakistan with the support of the uh, uh, this uh, USAID. Sir, as uh, Mayor Saab has mentioned, sir, we have been, the education department is very much dear. We have been wor working since pre partition. Sir, the, the problem is we are, we, we are still using the traditional approach. Despite huge investment, despite po policy framework, despite new policies, strategies, and many things, they have been disseminated, they have been uh, brought into the mainstream by expert, by spending money. Sir, they still I would, uh, my concern is, my concern is uh, still after 35 years service, my still my concern is that we are, sir, we, in all cases, we are using the traditional approach. Sir, when we have this sort of uh, policy framework, this sort of strategy, and this sort of implementation framework, I, I don't, sir, think uh, that is being implemented, uh, that it should be really objective with, with the uh, traditional approach. For this sir, very reason, I would suggest there's some sort of a, a, a small unit that should be independent, monitored and coordinated by the federal government. Uh, but that is, has, has to be assigned to the duty, the mandate to, to oversee and guide uh, and coordinate with the properly with the federal government. That is, I think, the best way. If we have left it, sir, uh, sir, to the traditional approach, for example, the chief engineer, the subordinate engineer, and many uh, the engineers that, that we have been working in the department, they have many tasks. Uh, sir, they are not free, but they don't have free time. They are always engaged. We are at office, at my own office. I visit by at least 15 to 30 MPS per day. So there is no time for me to look in, in sort of this uh, implementation of, of policies for the, for the government. So I would suggest if we are going to implement it, well, sir, policy is not the solution, as mentioned by the mayor. Sir. In many cases, the last year, the, 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 the problem is, sir, we are overloaded with, with legislation and policies. But the implementation, the implementation, I think, would you all agree with me? They are very, very, very poor. For example, in case of uh, the other, the, the there was a, 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 a report in the newspaper. In case of uh, women, we are overloaded with legislation, but the implementation is nowhere. Similar in all in all the field of, uh, sir, I would suggest at the end, if we are going to implement it in the way we have planned, that we should have some sort of independent uh, unit 
at the federal government, they are in the, pro in the but this may, may be in the federal government, and they should coordinate with the rest of the provinces. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nizamuddin Sab. You really touched the point which I want to emphasize. Let's say we, we okay, we have want to improve the water resources availability to the farmers. We want to improve the productivity. Now let's reverse back. That's the needed policy. Policy need to how we are making sure that the policy is implemented or not. So we need to have a basically the data, and we that, that data need to be translated towards the knowledge, and knowledge will help us to generate the evidences and evidence are using for decision making. So that's the whole chain. The, I will share the saline example. Okay, that it was a similar model. Now the first thing which they have done it basically, let's say even if each state will start providing, each province will start the data, and then there will be again sort of the discussion there, which data is correct, uh, whether data is correct, this one data is correct, and there is the kind of national standard we have it or not. I think the Australia learned a lot from that, the experience for the first five years that the National Water Initiative, which was proposed, that was not worth moving anywhere because each province was saying my data is correct and then the other data is not correct. It was not matching. So what they did it on the transformational journey, they thought about that one, establishing an independent institute at the federal level whose role is coordinating with all the provincial level. They have the provincial uh, regulatory authority or the, getting all the data. To put that the standard there, the first important thing they did it, developing a national data water standard, and that was owned by the government, plus the academia, plus that the other institute, and then they develop a standard. So from historical, they, they could correct all the standard, but from now onward, whatever the data is generated, that data need to meet those standards. So later on, there is a no blame game. Each province, one province is saying, oh, my data is correct, and another province is saying, no, this data is not correct. So I think that will be the important step where the Ministry of Water Sources could play a role establishing a, some kind of authority who's looking around from the data and how that data could be translated toward the science, toward the decision making, and how that could be providing a big picture on the water availability. Then the second, uh, the important thing comes in at the provincial level. The provincial governments are implementing and moving forward on that one. But let's go back to one step that, uh, to uh, Mohsen Lagari Saab. Just as a, you are the, here I'm not considering you as a politician. I'm just considering you as a farmer. And in your farmer's capacity, where you mentioned that you have a perennial uh, system and you are getting a six month of water and everyone talked about the water. And how we could improve that one? How we could, in making sure that whatever the policies are there from a farmer level, as you have rightly mentioned many times, the farmer does not worry about from where the water coming. He's thinking about the farm profitability. I want to come to you from that angle. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mohsin Saab, as a small farmer uh, who's irrigated through a non-perennial canal system, my concern uh, is, uh, or like any other uh, farmer, would be the availability of water when I need it. Uh, for me, it is immaterial as to if there is a shortage, there isn't enough water uh, that was stored, or there's a conflict between Sindh and Punjab as to if we can draw water from Tonsa Barrage or we cannot draw water from Tonsa Barrage. Uh, it really doesn't matter to me as a farmer. I am going to be complaining when I don't get my share of water at the time when I need it. Uh, our Canal system, unfortunately, uh, as as a user, as a, as a consumer of the, uh, our system is designed uh, to be a supply based system. I will get water when it is my turn, not necessarily when I need it. There has to be some kind of a mechanism in there where I should be able to better use the water. A term that they use in our area, and I think everywhere they say, is that the farmer at the tail is the one who uh, suffers the loss, uh, the losses when he doesn't have water because everybody at upstream steals water, and the farmer at the tail is the one who is uh, uh, drowned because then everybody just closes their outlets and all the farm water comes to you when you really don't need it and your crop gets uh, ruined. So uh, as a farmer, my biggest concern is that somehow a mechanism has to be, be placed and that's something that I keep uh, uh, debating with my uh, agriculture department, water, my on-farm management people, uh, that 
it is not just their responsibility to uh, line the water channels but help me better understand and help me better use my water on the farm so uh, um, and i think they did uh, include a little project this time which i will request the other provinces to look into it also uh, of making small reservoirs like a, a two canal pond that i can make in my farm from which i where i can store my water when my when it is my turn and then use it when i need it so uh, i think the the government of punjab's uh, on farm management people did uh, include a small component in their uh, bigger uh, pr project whereby they were subsidizing people to make these small uh, uh, water ponds within their uh, lands to do it another thing that as as a farmer my concern is that uh, uh, the governments i don't know about the other governments but the government of punjab is spending a lot of money on subsidizing me for my uh, um, uh, drip irrigation and it is like somebody who has who can hardly drive a motorbike and you give him uh, a space shuttle to drive the technology jump is so much we uh, unfortunately uh, most of the time we try to uh, do things which are beyond the capacity of the farmer himself as a farmer uh, th these drip irrigation systems that have i, I have seen people uh, spending a lot of money on this and then they're pulling it out because they can't manage it so uh, from from that high end uh, from from a no technology to that high end technology is a very big jump for me as a farmer and that has not really been uh, very successful or taken up despite millions and millions being spent on it so uh, as a farmer i would request the government to uh, uh, hold my hand and let me take little baby steps before i start running don't expect me to start running uh, when i can't when i can hardly walk uh, as a farmer uh, consumer of water i would also request the government or expect from the government uh, to ensure that the infrastructure is maintained so that i can uh, i can the water can be delivered to us our, our infrastructure is um, uh, i i think in the punjab it's over 100 about 150 year old infrastructure we have same in uh, said i guess it's it's over 100 years old and the required maintenance hasn't been done in a very long time so my canal system cannot deliver to me the water that that i am authorized to receive uh, despite the uh, other shortcomings of water theft and uh, all those uh, menaces my canal system uh, really doesn't take the water or deliver it to me at the same. so uh, as a consumer as a farmer i would request the government to prioritize Uh, uh canal maintenance as one of your are higher priorities so that the system is maintained brick and mortar infrastructure i was reading somewhere uh, requires 2 to 5% of the capital cost as uh, maintenance for it to be running at an optimum level and uh, uh, me uh, sitting in punjab a farmer from punjab when i look at my infrastructure uh, my infrastructure is worth about 20 to 25 billion us dollar according to different estimates and uh, if i get uh, 2% at 150 rupees to a dollar i mean dollar also keeps fluctuating so imagine how much money would i require for my annual maintenance for the system to be running optimally but somehow uh, as a consumer as a farmer my complaint to the government would be that the uh, uh, the system isn't getting enough uh, resources for its maintenance for me to be getting my water so my uh, points of view that i have been saying uh, saying right now are as a consumer as a small farmer uh, i really don't care what your the government's constraints are so i'm i'm angry with the government when i don't get my water i'm angry with the government when uh, my water is being stolen upstream it's it's not my responsibility uh, to come and monitor the canal it's the irrigation department who's supposed to do this if it is if the my uh, uh, the, the the gates on my canal are not functional it is it is the irrigation department who, i don't care if the irrigation department didn't get the money 
give me water and uh, the the big now this again as a farmer the biggest criticism that we farmers have is that we don't uh, pay for our water and yes we don't uh, because uh, whatever we we charge there wasn't really a proper mechanism of uh, collection of abiana uh, i i don't get my regular bills from abiana one day a number dar would come and uh, start insisting that i pay so much and he would give me a little uh, piece of paper a little parchi that would uh, just say that s this and this amount received as abiana wouldn't really get into details of how much land which crop what rate so uh, and and then maybe 3 years later he comes back to me again and says ki 2021 you didn't pay your abiana i have lost my little parchi i don't have it anymore so i'll have to pay it again but the amounts are so insignificant that i don't really raise hue and cry about it i as a consumer as a user i would request the government to raise the abiana cost the water cost but ensure delivery of water when i use my uh, tube well it costs me about 8 to 10000 rupees per acre to farm uh, to irrigate my land depending on how low i am going and what kind of soil i have uh, but for uh, if i am willing to pay 10 to 15000 rupees for my tube well why wouldn't i be paying 5000 rupees to irrigation department per acre if water availability is ensured in our area uh, mohsin sahab uh, people have installed uh, solar tube wells and they're selling water at 6 uh, to 800 rupees an hour and uh, but but then because people are paying that because there's a, a surety of water being available so water delivery is is my biggest concern and all these policy matters and all these abstract things that we're talking about i really don't understand and i am not even concerned with it this is for you at a higher level to uh, uh, discuss and uh, i as a consumer want my water when i need it when my crop needs it the other things are all greek to me you could be singing a uh, german ballads to me and that this this talk would make as much sense to a, a common farmer uh, as a german uh, ballad would do i hope nobody here understands german i don't so i was just think it, it's so foreign to us all so uh, as a farmer my concern is getting my water at the right time the policies the laws the implementations are all abstract things to me i i hope i wasn't uh, too uh, critical of the government but that's how a, a farmer i'm i'm talking as a farmer thank you just considering at the time and just uh, i think i don't want to stand in between you and lunch i will be just uh, uh, concluding that one and just providing some remarks to me this is a, not the first dialogue we need to have a basically we have a series of dialogue and me as a knowledge institute we provide an opportunity again to bring all the four stakeholders and see what we could learn from each other so we learned a lot what sind is doing it and uh, what balochistan has plans to do it what the kpk government is doing it and what's that the uh, the punjab government is doing and also we uh, mincha sir presented a really well elaborated the aspirational implementation plan when we are implementing the aspirational implementation plan that needs ownership from the provincial government from the federal government and as well as to the grassroots level where we are working with the communities uh, i think that this uh, this kind of dialogue need to continue and as an institute we will be happy to provide wherever we could provide the mechanism and support there but ultimately it's the responsibility of the government agency to implement it one of the thing uh, and we heard also from a farmer's perspective i think the irrigation uh, modernization wherever in the world has happened it uh, it's always uh, worked around this uh, business uh, service delivery as a farmers as a, in australia the how they have changed it are in china as well as when they look around that when the farmers need a water assurance and how that water comes in that needs involvement of community that needs involvement of private sector industry and everything so we need to think about the system level perspective it need to go from a top down from the ministry of water so they looking around the water availability building a new reservoir at the national scale level then the provincial government are playing a role at that the different level they are building a small reservoir maintaining the infrastructure and now it's i'm really pleased to hear that all the four provincial departments are thinking about the not on irrigation 
distribution point of view, but water as a resource and transformational journey of irrigation department to the water resources department and building new initiative like Punjab has already approved the Irrigation and Drainage Act, which was after 100, 150 years from 1873, and we are talking about 2021. There is a lot of learning from there, uh, and uh, Mayor Risha have mentioned, and Secretary Kazam have also mentioned, uh, we don't need to worry about that one, what the things we didn't work. We also made a lot of progress over the last uh, three years, and over the last 70 years, we have made so many success there. So we need to look around that one, how we could move on picking up from those successes and develop a more coherent policy that could be implemented to improve the livelihood of the, uh, the everyone because water is scarce for me and for everyone, and we need to think about water for, for, for future generations. Thank you, everyone. This is the lunch. Lunch is in the cafe poolside. poolside. And lunch and prayer break, and before starting the next session around uh, 1.30.